Alrighty, what's up guys? Single player Nacho here. Diminishing thoughts, final moments, and haunting scriptures. That's what you'll find in the files and diaries found within Resident Evil games. And it's these files that are the creepiest, scariest you'll ever see. Now it's not just a bunch of pointless lore and words, sometimes you'll find a scene with a body, or clues that really set in to the horrific atmosphere. There's a lot of terrifying and barbaric acts committed by the antagonists. Some people just can't take it anymore, and others are just creepy as hell about it. Perverts. Without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have Resident Evil Outbreak, the newspaper. Now, if you haven't played this title, I wouldn't be surprised. Outbreak is a very hidden and well-overlooked Resident Evil title, partly due to its interesting gameplay. And whenever there's a rat within the intro of a video game, it's gonna screw everyone up. Regardless, it's still a Resident Evil game, and this newspaper found within the first level proves that. Now, the file itself is found within a poorly kept office space. It's on a coffee table with beers and playing cards next to it. The newspaper is known as Raccoon Today. And no, it's not about garbage cans. It's actually about a serial killer. The newspaper reads, Daylight slaying? Clouds loom over Raccoon City. RPD announced it will set up a special joint investigation HQ for a serial murder case in which over 30 murders have already occurred. While there is no connection between suspects, the methods in which the victims were slain are all similar. The final page of the newspaper reads, Rumor has it that a certain member of the press has obtained some information. The suspect was temporarily insane at the time of the incident. Very secretive and hush-hush information on this newspaper. The room that accompanies the newspaper may just give us clues and will definitely give you chills down your spine. There are very old photographs of, well, creepy men with mustaches and cowboy hats. They look like frontiersmen, hundreds and hundreds of books, and an old record player. Are we dealing with a serial killer that has been killing for a very very long time. Or is this some B.O.W. trickery? A serial killer within Resident Evil actually makes it two times as creepy. Not a monster, but a person. Next up, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Blank's Diary. Nothing like a good old tale about child abuse, or even worse, child exploitation and murder and experiments. That's what you'll receive in the Raccoon City Orphanage, headquarters to a horrible, horrible person known as Brian Irons. Now these poor kids undoubtedly suffered tremendous activity by the owners, and there's a file found within the orphanage that proves this. Now just listen to the god-awful, scary tune that's playing in the background as you find this diary. Yeah, no thanks. Now this diary does belong to a child, so I'm gonna translate the writing. Blank's diary. If you're reading this, go call police. Boogeyman's here, eating everybody. Many bark boogeyman's here. Help, they're coming. Help me, mommy. To be fair, there's lots of things that can easily be boogeymen in Resident Evil, though the word bark is used here. So I believe this child is pointing towards the zombie dogs that are found outside of the orphanage. Looks like some of the dogs broke into this orphanage and ate some kids, or they were used as scare tactics for these kids. I would not be surprised. You would think you'd be safe within the orphanage, though if you look around, there are very demonic-looking toys, off-putting child drawings, that accounts for a horrific experience for these poor children. Next up, Resident Evil 7, Main House Notes. If there was ever a place to stay far, far away from, it's the Baker Mansion, found in Dulvey, Louisiana. There's actually quite a fair amount of warning before you even enter the overly locked up gates, animal carcasses, Jack Baker himself. How many more obvious clues do you need to stay away? Well, for those unfortunate enough to have visited this mansion, there's a pile of burned up shoes, caps, clothing, and purses that tells us just about enough about what happened 
to the Baker victims. The first few documents you'll find in the guest house are ominous black and white Polaroid pictures, haunting images you can't erase from your mind. A pair of legs, a locked up cell, and a woman that just so happens to be your wife. Well, in the game anyway, shows us the captivity side of what happens to the victims. Once they are caught, they are imprisoned and subject to horrific mind games and monster transformation. In the lower side of the basement, you'll find applicants to become mold monsters, and they're wearing body bags, carefully tied up limb to limb, hanging and on a gurney, as well as on the floor, just little to no care about what happened to these people. And their eternal fate is to become this, a mold monster. Within the main house notes, you'll find clues about the experience, such as this ripped up piece of paper that states, I shall dash them against the stones. I have no doubt in my mind that this was probably written by Jack Baker. It just shows the anger that the mold entity puts you through. Another note is the Dolby Daily newspaper. The newspaper states over 20 missing in two years. That's 20 victims that have gone to the Dolby household and never came back. There's even a red marker comment written by one of the bakers that says, more on the way. This sarcastic assholery type comment I think belongs to Lucas Baker, aka J Station. Within the house, you'll also find several faces plastered on the wall, possibly pictures of those who are missing. I don't think these are normal missing persons posters. If you zoom in a little closer, there's scribbled on comments, possibly details of how they died by the murderers themselves. Very grim stuff. Next up, Resident Evil Revelations Communication Officer's Journal. Wetsuits, Chris Redfield, mannequins, and whatever the hell horror this is. You spend a couple hours on the Queen Zenobia and you'll be writing in a diary yourself within minutes. After all, there's a lot of fishy stuff going on. Fishiest yet is what exactly happened to the communications officer. According to this man's diary, he went through some absolute hell. His diary reads, I can still hear those things out there, clawing on my door or looking for prey. Too bad they ain't getting in here. Day two, shit, those damn things got in through the air ducts, but I put them all down before they could do any real damage. I think this is day four. I got a fever, hope these monsters don't find me like this. I'm so out of it. Am I infected? Is it just a cold? How many days is it? I found someone to talk to, so happy, he's very funny, tells lots of jokes, lots. They're funny, I laugh, laugh. His face is too close, in my face. He thinks so too, no room to move, had a fight, he wanted all the foods, he was eating meat good, tasty meats. I saw his face chewing, eating. No meat for me, looked tasty. His head looks tasty. Help, can't move, trapped. Me, not me. Who is me? Help, please help. Mayday, mayday. I probably don't have to explain to you guys what happened to the communications officer. He is definitely transforming into a B.O.W. A gigantic, twin-faced, grotesque creature. So that's who he was talking to in his diary this whole time. A little face. So, so disturbing. Next up, Resident Evil 4, Luis's Notes. None of you are wondering who is Luis Serra from Resident Evil 4, because he is quite awesome, although he is a researcher for the Plaga. But unlike all the other Baldies and villagers in Resident Evil 4, he's trying to take the Plaga down. And he's left some notes behind, some very disturbing things, on the various creatures you find in the game. And at the very top of the pecking order is Luis's Memo 3, which features a very graphic set of images depicting a regenerator. I'm telling you guys, the first time I picked up this file, these images burned into my brain. They're certainly spooky, but the pictures are accompanied by the following text. There's one type of creature that clearly distinguishes itself from the rest. These creatures are called regenerators. 
Regenerators have a superior metabolism that allows them to regenerate their lost body parts at incredible speeds. I've never seen anything like it. It is this characteristic that makes them almost invincible to conventional weapons. I can't imagine the fear that struck upon seeing the very first Regenerator born. You would think it would have an infantile sense of morale and brain activity, but there's something very evil behind their eyes. They seem to just want to feed on anything that catches their eyesight. Documenting the very first Regenerators, who were thought to be invincible at the time, must have been spooky. Next up, Resident Evil Code Veronica, Prisoner's Diary. Code Veronica is chock filled with creepy files that really embraces the amount of neglect and misery that's being inflicted on anyone that's not named Ashford. Need I say more when we read a prisoner's diary, who were often subject to hostile experiments. This file can be found venturing towards the prisoner bunkers, a place that is largely destroyed by the time you reach it. It's a room filled with zombies, former prisoners, that pretty much just ended up eating each other. You get to the prison barracks and boom. A very violent sight to behold. Bunk beds filled with blood. One guy's just hanging out. Dead, of course. But there is a story to tell here, no doubt. We're looking at the bunk beds of prisoners. And on one of the bunk beds, you will find the diary. And it reads, May 13th, this room stinks of death. Based upon the information I've found, I believe that I'm far south of the equator. Lucky for me, that Bob in the bunk below me is one of those interesting types of guys. Without warning, a group of military men took Bob to the building behind the guillotine stand. At midnight, I'll sneak out of here to see him. I've been hearing that anyone taken to that building never comes back. On top of that, there are these really large plastic bags constantly being removed from that place. I'd better pray for Bob. May 27th, since my last entry, all of my fellow inmates have been taken to that building. I know that I am next. It's obvious that we were all here to be used as Alfred's guinea pigs. There's no way out. What am I gonna do? Apparently this prisoner had very strong instincts and his gut feeling was pretty much right. You get to the guillotine area of Resident Evil Code Veronica, and it is beyond words violence. They really used that thing. I would think it was decoration. You don't really execute people like that. But the guillotine is definitely freshly used with the accompanying various zombies, former prisoners that fell to Alfred's various experiments. Next up, Resident Evil 6, Detention Center. Welcome, Resident Evil 6. I'm sure you have some scary stuff hidden well within your action-oriented Resident Evil game. Not quite. This file is not about scary monsters that resemble demons, but about two guards that are supposed to look over Jake Mueller and Sherry Birkin. In particular, a conversation, a creepy one, that they were having about the imprisoned protagonists. It reads, It's been about four months since I started this job. Jake has been cooperative with the experiments, and the guy watching Sherry says she hasn't been causing any trouble either. They've probably given up hope. Can't wait until this is over. I'm tired of staring at half-naked man all day, every day. I wish I could trade with the guy watching Sherry. <laughs> Unbelievably creepy, no doubt. And while we all pretty much remember Sherry Birkin as a tiny child, she's now more of an adult when we get to Resident Evil 6. Still, we don't think about Sherry that way. Goddamn preverts. Next up, Resident Evil 7, Marguerite's Notebook. This file can be found in the old house within the Baker residence. And the resident, the evil resident, of the old house is Marguerite Baker. Stay the fuck out! She's not a very nice woman. She doesn't like people anywhere around her area. Very territorial woman. And this does not only go for uninvited guests, but her own family. You see, Marguerite is not herself in any aspect. Her entire brain and personality has been shifted towards mold. The first note you'll find in the old house shows an exchange between Marguerite and her daughter Zoe. Now tell me if this is any way you'd talk to your daughter. The file reads, You think your father and I are idiots, you spoiled, pathetic child. I wish you'd never been born. 
unforgivably pathetic yet always looking down on us and trying to leave our home after everything we've done for you. Pathetic, pathetic. If you ever touch my altar, I'll slice off your chest and serve it up as pot roast. Jesus. And if you think this woman is lying or just trying to scare her daughter, just take a look at the daughter's DLC. She is so visibly distraught by the mold that she doesn't care who she harms, even if it's her daughter. Even more of this behavior is explained through Marguerite's diary. It reads, October 11th. My ears have been ringing all day and I haven't been able to sleep since the child showed up. It's like Zoe says, there's something strange about the child. I'm seeing things, hearing things, can't stop feeling nauseous. I went to see the doctor in town and he gave me an x-ray. What's happening to me? October blank. The arm is a sign of the child's trust. The arm will lead us to happiness. And anyone who corrupts that happiness, I won't allow them to live. The tale of the Baker house is a tragic one to say the least. They were once a happy, normal family with they're common issues, everyone has those. But not until that little Evelyn mold child showed up. Everything essentially went to hell. And this diary shows us the very last sane thoughts of Marguerite Baker. Next up, Resident Evil 3 Remake UBCS Suicide Note. Resident Evil 3 puts us in a very chaotic place. Raccoon City is basically about to be blown up to smithereens. The damage and destruction is one thing, but what that does to the human mind is another. I mean, there's goddamn zombies and liquors and a nemesis, Mr. X, Fedora Hat, running around all over the place. What does that do to people? Well, for one unfortunate soul, it meant the very end. In the streets of Raccoon City, you'll come across a UBCS soldier who has decided to take his own life. Now I'm no crime scene expert, but for one single gunshot to the head, it looks like a lot of blood is going on here. So what was the final straw that led this man to end himself? There is a suicide note or journal that explains everything. It states, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, East Africa. I thought I knew what hell was. Figure I'd never crack no matter what was thrown at me. But this job, this one was supposed to be easy. I'd earned it. It all happened at once. There were 30 guys in our squad, all armed with state-of-the-art assault rifles, and yet we were wiped out in less than 48 hours. I've been through enough shit to know it only ever gets worse. And if that was just the beginning, maybe I'm a coward. I don't care. This is the only way out I have left. I just hope my body doesn't get back up after I pull the trigger. Very interesting final thoughts of this man. I do believe he was bitten and he tried to make sure he wouldn't become a zombie in the afterlife. Of course, one single headshot to the brain means no brain function, means no zombie. Goes to show the absolute foobar situation, fucked up beyond all repair, that was Raccoon City. This guy was a veteran in many places, could not handle flesh-eating monsters, and definitely did not want to become one. And last but not least, Resident Evil Remake, Trevor's Diary. Spooky mansion equals spooky interactions and spooky documents. There's definitely much more files that can be found within the mansion in Resident Evil 1 that will get your skin crawling. But in terms of disturbing, I gotta hand it to George Trevor's diary. You see, George Trevor was put in an ultimately horrible position. He designed the entirety of Spencer's mansion. He knew all the ins and outs, all the keys, all the puzzles, the hilariously elaborate puzzles, and by knowing all the secrets, he had to be put down. Of course, not just George Trevor, but his entire family. And this is what he said in his final moments. And at the title screen of the diary, you'll see a little comment that says, how did I end up like this? There are only two people that know the secret of this mansion, Sir Spencer and myself. If they kill me, Sir Spencer will be the only person that knows the secret. But for what purpose? It doesn't matter now. It's too dangerous here. My family, I hope they are alright. Unfortunately for George Trevor, he would be trapped in his own puzzles. He slowly starved to death, one of the most painful ways to go. As for what happened to his family, his wife was killed and his daughter transformed into a nearly indestructible monster, Lisa Trevor. Being able to access the thoughts of the man who was behind the entire construction of the mansion and how he was completely betrayed and knowing the grim aftermath of his family makes his diary one of the most disturbing files found in Resident Evil. 
Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure there are hundreds more files that you can easily put on this list. Make sure to comment down below your favorite ones, which ones creep you out the most. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more horror, lore, lists, and mysteries. I appreciate every single one of you. This is a very single community, after all. Again, guys, thank you all so much. Have an awesome rest of your day. And as always, stay single. Yeah.